And now to a natural event of, well, biblical proportions. The biggest invasion of cicadas in over 200 years has hit the United States. Two so-called broods are emerging from the ground at the same time, creating massive swarms, and they're as loud as lawnmowers. We'll talk to a cicada scientist in a moment. First, let's take a look at what's happening there in the U.S. It's being called a cicada apocalypse, but although they have zombie red eyes, the insects in a group known as magicicada, or periodical cicadas, don't bite, transmit disease, or pose a danger to ecosystems, though they are pretty loud. Magicicada adults are around only for a few weeks, emerging from underground to mate and lay eggs on trees before dying. Young insects called nymphs hatch from the eggs after several weeks, fall to the ground, and burrow in. The nymphs spend many years living in the soil, feeding on the roots of plants, before all of them emerge at once, molt into adults, and begin the cycle all over again. Not all periodical cicadas emerge in the same years. Those that appear at the same regular intervals in the same geographic locations are called broods. Over a dozen broods are found in a range covering most of the eastern United States. Two of the largest are now emerging simultaneously. It's the first time these two broods have come out together since 1803. That's because one of the broods only emerges every 17 years, while the other emerges every 13 years, two prime numbers. An overlapping emergence of both populations therefore only happens every 221 years. Up to a trillion of the insects could appear in the coming weeks. Then these two large broods of cicadas won't emerge at the same time again until 2245. And for more on this, P.J. Leash. He is an entomologist and he joins us from Wisconsin uh, University. P.J., uh, any measures that people should take other than uh, buying earplugs? That's about all you really need to do. These insects are really quite harmless. They don't bite or sting. There's perhaps a little bit of concern in that they can cause some damage to plants, although large trees in the landscape tend to tolerate this just fine, but if you had a small tree or shrub, you could consider covering it with some fine mesh netting. Mm. Now, I've been hearing that some people have actually been frying them up and eating them. Uh, is that advisable? It is certainly something that can be done. Um, they are non-toxic. They don't contain any chemical defenses. And really, they're highly palatable for wildlife. And in some cases, humans have tried these as well. Recently, uh, myself and colleagues were involved with an outreach event here in the state of Wisconsin and the Midwestern part of the United States. And we actually had a local restaurant prepare some dishes, entrees, and desserts made from periodical cicadas. Mm, that sounds appetizing. Um, I was reading up on this, and one thing I was reading is a bit weird, that a mind-controlling fungus has been turning some of these cicadas into sexed-up zombies. How does that work? Yeah, so this sounds like something out of a science fiction movie, but there's a very particular fungus, Massospora cicadina, and it has evolved with these insects. And what it does is it infects individuals, and if it happens to be a male cicada, it destroys some of their anatomy and essentially replaces their reproductive structures. Those infected males then attempt to mate with both males and females, other cicadas, and while this is going on, the fungus is producing some amphetamine-like compounds which are likely involved in altering its behavior and so when they try to mate with other individual cicadas, it's spreading these spores around. But in the grand scheme of things, it's a relatively small percentage of the population that's affected by this disease. Still, it sounds very unpleasant. After years underground, these cicadas uh, only have a limited time above ground to mate, so they get extremely loud. Uh, how do they do that? So it's the male cicadas that are singing. 
And on the side of their bodies, the males possess these membrane-like structures called timbals. And attached to the timbals are muscles that are able to contract very rapidly. In addition, for males, their abdomen is essentially hollow. So they have these vibrating membranes and a hollow abdomen. If you think about it, it is almost as if they have evolved to become living musical instruments. And when those membranes uh, vibrate, it causes the production of sound, which they are producing simply for mating purposes to attract females. Uh, and briefly, even though it sounds very biblical, they're not as dangerous as locusts, are they? No, they're not. Historically, they've been blamed for things such as crop damage because historically they were at times referred to as locusts, but locusts are a type of grasshopper that can damage plants. Really, these cicadas that we're seeing here in the United States are quite harmless. Thank you very much. PJ Leach there, a cicada expert from Wisconsin University. Thank you.